What's up, guys? It's Marina here at Unbroken. I'm actually in the studio here in Coronado, California, not recording this week in Houston. Super proud to be here. Today, I'm actually, I actually have somebody on the show today, you guys. I know this is kind of crazy, but um, it's my friend Shay, Shay Williams, and she is from Texas as well. I met her at our CrossFit gym, CrossFit Overtake in Spring, Texas. Um, she's a previous CrossFit Games team athlete, and I asked her to come on the show today just to talk about her journey into CrossFit, what she's been through, where she's going, um, any more attempts in the next, you know, future, in the future, in the near future to um, get into the games again as well. So with that said, it's going to be a short introduction. Oh, and by the way, I do have my team here with me. So if I randomly say, hey, let's bring something up, Sarah's got you. So with that said, you guys, uh, this is Shay. I want to introduce you to Shay. Hi, Shay. Hi, Marina. How are you? I'm good. Good. Thank Thank you so much for having me today. I'm excited to be out here in sunny California. Is this your first time out here? It's my first time to San Diego, but not to California. And let me tell you, I, it's cold. It's it's way colder than I thought it would be. Yes. But it's beautiful regardless. It's your first time to Imperial Beach in Coronado. Yes. Yes. And you've done the run around, all that. Done the run around, around. yeah. So everyone that I've bumped into, I'm an extrovert at heart. So never meet a stranger. And everyone I've talked to, I'm like, I'm on a working vacation. That's perfect. And so the job that I do, which I'm sure we'll get into, mm-hmm. is fully remote for the most part. So um, thank you for this opportunity. It's great to be here traveling with you. I'm excited to have yeah. you here. Okay, so like I had just mentioned, um, I kind of just wanted to get into your story. What's your story? When you began CrossFit, why you even started CrossFit, and obviously where it's taken you. Um, work-wise, professional athlete-wise, and that stuff. So let's go. Take it away. Tell me about the beginnings for you. Um, Well, I first feel like I need to acknowledge that it's International Women's Day. So Uh, really cool to be with one of the baddest women I know uh, here today. Thank you. Um, And as I was thinking about what I wanted to talk about on the show, um, you and I talked about this recent post, series of posts that I did on my Instagram And the way that I chose to tell that story of my journey through CrossFit, specifically CrossFit, was through the lens of a love story. And so today, as I'm scrolling through Instagram and on different social media, um, I've heard this recurring theme about um, platonic love. And it's really on International Women's Day, it's celebrating female friendships. And so how cool is it that we're here together talking talking about all this and Um, And the reason that I chose to tell my story through the lens of a love story is that, you know, as as female, as women, we are raised with the notion of romantic love. And I don't know if we really ever get into the different ideas of love. And um, as a 33-year-old single woman, no, never been married, no kids. Are you looking? Girl, I'm looking. (laughs) Actually, you know what? I don't know if I'm looking, but, like, I'm ready. Good. I'm ready. And, um... Like, the idea of a romantic love is, is incredible, but where I'm at right now, it's, like, is acknowledging where love shows up in my life, and that's through CrossFit and this, like, w- the sport that I've chosen to pursue for the past 10 years, and friendships like this, like, new friendships, mm-hmm. but even so recently that we've met, like, we've bonded, and, like, we've got, we have so much in common, and um, we see each other and, mm-hmm. you know, like celebrating those friendships. And there's been several in, in, in my recent history that I'm like, man, like this is real. I'm like, this is love. And so I chose to tell, tell my story through the lens of a love story because it's been my love story for 10, for the past 10 years. So I just wanted to kind of, I just wanted to preface with that a little bit. And then kind of, so you asked where I'm at now, yeah. how I got into CrossFit, short, I'll keep it short, bio, like, growing up, I was a gymnast, my mom put me in gymnastics, and I was two years old, okay. I fell in love with the sport, it was my passion, I was actually homeschooled a lot through my childhood, and that um, allowed me to participate more in um, the sport of gymnastics, okay. did that for 12 years, and then age and injury kind of just caught up to me, and so my first, like, major injury occurred when I was I think 13, 14 years old. And then also at that timeline, it was like, choose the Olympic route or it's like, hang your hat up, girl, go have a normal life. And, Uh um, that's what I chose to like go to public high school. How was that coming from homeschool to public high school? So I did a little bit of like private school, charter school and homeschool, like kindergarten to eighth grade. And so 
I was ready. Like I said, I'm an extrovert. I love people. I yeah. love meeting new people. And so for me, the idea of going to like a public high school that was, I think my graduating class wound up being like, well, like 500, 500 oh, wow. maybe. It was a lot. Um, that was a lot for you? <laughs> okay, oh small God. town East small Texas. Town. <laughs> it was the biggest school in the area. Um, but it was great. I was so excited. I made immediately, just like instantaneously, made a ton of friends. Loved loved that. Did. Um, I did swim team in high school, which was great. Uh, loved that as a sport. And then in college, didn't really pursue like health and wellness as much. I just wow. really, I just enjoyed college. I just should have. Um, I told my mom, I remember telling my mom when she asked about my grades and stuff. I was like, mom, I have a 4.0 in my social education, and that's going to be the thing that carries me throughout my career. And I would like to say, mom, I was right. And she'll tell you that too. Um, <laughs> I love that. I love and that. so in college, you know, I really, I, I did the rec center thing. Like I loved going to the rec center. I went to Texas A&M and uh, College Station, Texas. And that was great. But it wasn't until after college when I was really was like, actually just introduced to the sport of CrossFit. So back in, this was 2013, mm-hmm. it, it had, CrossFit had kind of started to gain a little traction. And on my Facebook, this is like uh, MySpace maybe? I think ah! like, like, am I aging <laughs> MySpace. myself? I think maybe MySpace was done, but definitely on Facebook, I saw there was a couple friends of mine posting their gym pictures and videos, like doing handstands and, um, different things on on a rig that I now I know now to call it a rig. Okay. I don't know what it was right. then. And I, or box jumps. I remember seeing some videos of box jumps. I'm like, that looks really fun. And so I uh, reached out to that person. I was like, what are you doing? She's like, oh, it's CrossFit. You need to come try it. Oh my gosh. So what, like, I want to say early 2013, yeah. I walked into the gym, uh, to the doors of a CrossFit gym for the first time. And when I say I haven't looked back, I haven't. It's um, inside the CrossFit world, which you are now also mm-hmm. invested in. It's I, I, I call it a cult. And um, I've made a joke several times over the, the course of the past year that I'm a um, big cult girl. Big cult girl. <laughs> I went to Texas A&M. Mm, it's a cult. Yeah. Um, my first, like, I would say, like, my longest career that I, like, developed the most through Lululemon. Also a cult. Yeah. CrossFit cult. Um, I now work for a brand called Podium Nutrition, which we'll get into yes. later. We're building a yeah, cult following, so I'm a big cult girl. That's good. <laughs> but the good cult. It's, good. it's not like Waco cult. Right, yeah, we're it's, not. It's a good cult. We don't want to go there. We don't want to go there. <laughs> well, um, it doesn't, doesn't turn out too well for anybody. Right. But so started out in 2013, uh-huh. and man, I was in. Like, I was, I bought in. Like, that's when, like, paleo was, like, a big deal. Yes, man. And so, like, from nutrition to planning my day around my workouts, like, all of it, I was there, I was invested, and I was in a great community in South College Station, Um, really, I don't know if I believe in luck, but, like, I got lucky with, like, the the crew that I joined, the owner, um, had, like, a pretty big impact on my life, and it's, like, getting where I'm at today, and, and, and it was great, and so I got stronger, I got healthier, And then that was 2013, so I was in it for a full year. And in 2014, which is fun because this year in the Open, there was a workout that flashed back to 2014. And back then, like, I had this mindset. I was like, oh, I'm not ready to do the Open. I haven't been doing CrossFit for long enough. So I didn't do the Open. But I remember that workout, and there was a girl in my gym who got one muscle up. One oh. muscle up in 2014, and she, but she made it to regionals, oh and like gosh. that's like how far this sport has come in the past wow. eight years. Yeah, I think, eight years. So it's really, it was really cool to see that workout show up. And um, but anyways, oh, May of that year, I was out wakeboarding at Lake Bryan with some close friends of mine. A uh, thing that we regularly participated in. I've been on the water since this as long as I, since I could walk, I've yeah. been doing water sports and grew up there very comfortable and then just got in a freak accident. So wound up colliding on a wakeboard, colliding with the Lake Bryan dam and, um, a couple head over heels across big boulders of rocks. Um, later I wake up and there's an ambulance pulling up and oh I rush to the hospital and the doctor came through. This is like, of course, over hours of time. Yeah. The doctor's like, you want the bad news or the good news? And I was like, let's start with the bad. And he was like, well, the bad news is you broke your neck. And the good news is you're incredibly lucky to be alive. 
And so here I am in a hospital in Bryan, Texas, and, uh, you know, couldn't, can't even still process what I was feeling in that moment. But that journey, what that kind of resulted in, and this is where I started my um, part one of my love story uh -huh. on, on Instagram recently is that I like I fell in love with CrossFit and then CrossFit saved my life yeah. and so that was one of the first things that the doctor told me like if it wasn't for the physical shape that my body was in and like um the muscular like the muscle that I'd put on in the past year and like upper body traps like all of this like the body knows what to do in periods of trauma and like the adrenaline the inflammation he said, he, the doctor said, he was like, it formed an actual neck brace, like, when that happened, and that's what saved my life. Oh, my God. Yeah, right? And so, you thought I was addicted then, like... Oh, that had have just been a total... Yeah. Game changer. And from that moment on, I was like, no matter what happens to me, I know that I can survive and thrive, like, I can, I can get through anything. Like, life can throw me anything, and I can overcome it, and so... Um, I remember me and my mom went to a follow-up appointment and this doctor told me, well, you know, you broke your neck and I'm in a neck brace, like all like Aww. rigid and stuff in this, in this office. <laughs> and he was like, I just want to be clear with you. He said, you'll never squat again. You will never, um, like he, like we had talked about CrossFit at this point. He was like, you're never going to be able to do these things again. And I just need you to like face this reality like the severity of your condition um your sports life is over like he told me those words in the doctor's office and this is we're at like june 2014 right now uh -huh. and i just remember sitting there like i'm here my mom's sitting right next to me and i just like he's talking 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 and i just like i'm like let me just stop and i just looked at my mom i said we're done here and like we got up and we walked out of his doctor's office and we sat in that parking lot for like two or three hours of the hospital afterwards researching any, literally any other doctor that we could find. And through some like wild family friend connections, um, we got in with a surgeon up in Dallas. His name is Andrew Dossett. Uh -huh. Totally just incredible guy and really well known in the sports space. He's done a lot of work with different um Different, uh, different athletes, MLB, NFL, uh -huh. and um, we reached out to them, and he was like, yeah, I can't see you for, like, four months, and we're like, no, we're going to need something sooner than that, because at this point, we thought a neck brace was going to be good enough, and what the doctor, who just told me all that negative BS, yeah. said, like, what was happening was, like, my neck was doing this, like, the neck brace was not... Um, providing enough support and so he's like surgeries are on the option otherwise you're going to sever your spinal cord and die oh and um, wow and so this doctor on the phone Dossett his uh, PA you know she was like yeah we can't get you in and she's like send your scans anyway so we send my scans and within like four hours they're like can you be in Dallas tomorrow and me and my mom she was in like East Texas Lufkin where I'm from I'm in College Station I managed like we meet in Dallas the oh next day and I'm in surgery like six days later and, and then like the road to recovery begins and it was just crazy because this, the difference was like, this guy believed in me. He was like, you want to do something? I'll get you to it. Yeah, and he had yeah. like uh, the resume to back it up. So, um, I would say that's really where my obsession with the sport. So do began. you think that that first doctor, do you think he's heard about you or like, do you think he's seen <laughs> any, because I mean, that had to have seriously humbled him. Whatever it had to have been, like, he must have just been... I hope so, but at the same time, it's like, walk. I just remember walking out of that, that office and just being like, this person no longer matters. Like, because what he said, and he, like, if he wants to, if he thinks he can hold me back, the first one, I'm like, you know, the first one to prove me wrong. Mm -hmm. And um, over the years, I've thought about, like, sending something to be Send like... Send a picture like, yeah. at the games or something be like... Because, I mean, how many other people has he... Said done that, that too, and yeah. Him. And I really That's think like awful. the coolest part about all that is like mindset, right? And it's people are going to tell you what they believe, but they can't tell you what you believe. And, and if you, stop. yeah, and if you set your mind to something, you find the right people, you get them in your corner, you can accomplish literally whatever you want. It's just oh like it's it, it's what you believe, what you want, and then surrounding yourself with people to get to that goal. So. Mm. That's where, like, That's I feel like so my journey awesome. really started. Right. Yeah. So then, um, so after that, then it just became a nonstop 
train, train. I mean, that was just your life. Kind of, yeah. So from, and this is a part that I don't talk about enough, especially with like CrossFitters today. It's like, there's a huge emphasis on Olympic weightlifting, right? Like moving a barbell decently well, um, both in um, Metcons where you're like cycling fast and being able to like lift a decent amount of weight. So from after my surgery in July of 2014, I didn't touch a barbell for eight months. And the the people that I was working with, I went a kind of a, um, an alternative physical therapy therapy route. Uh-huh. And all I did, all I worked a PVC pipe girl, like from July months? to I think December. So I guess that's only that's six months, uh-huh. right? The only thing I was allowed to touch weight wise was a PVC pipe. But you know what I did? I drilled weightlifting, snatching, Your clean form and must dirt. Be like what is pretty phenomenal but I well mean, if you ask my coach now it's not but back then it was a little <laughs> better because we hammered it all the time and wow. and so it was one of those things it's like I was in it at that point I made a decision I was in it for the long haul I didn't know what the end game was like CrossFit Games was not on my radar back then but just like being strong being healthy and then finding a way to compete again was like the thing that was on my mind mm-hmm. and I knew that I just I was going to do whatever it took to get there yeah and so in that six months like I said, PVC pipe. And then I actually did my first weightlifting meet in March or April of the following year. So like less than one year from the accident. Wow. But what's cool is I found a video from that meet and this past season, I doubled both my snatch and my clean and jerk. Are you serious? Yeah. Oh my so gosh. So I'll, I'll have to send you that footage yeah. because it's watching and I'm like, Ew, like that's so atrocious. Oh. But where I was and what like that what wasn't. I was going yeah. through at that point in time, it was like really like holy holy moly, like look what has been accomplished from twenty fifteen to I'm so glad you saw that. Yeah. Oh my it was gosh. a good like Wow. All right, girl, keep going. Yeah. Oh my gosh. Okay, so you get through your lifting now, all yeah. that kind of stuff, and then is this kind of where you fell into Lulu? Like is so that- Around that same time, 2015, Mm -hmm. um, I was working for Hilton Hotel and then the coach that I mentioned at the first CrossFit gym. Mm -hmm. So he was still, I was still like, he was still involved in my life um, because he had recommended me to the weightlifting coach that I had started working with in College Station. But he's actually in the Woodlands, which is where I live now Mm -hmm. and was an ambassador at that Lululemon store. Okay. And Lululemon was getting ready to open up. Um, back then we called it a showroom and it was just a three day a week model where we were open for three days, but then the rest of the time we spent in the community and they were looking for someone to build that store. He referred me, I wound up with the company opening up that store in college station. And okay. that really like it plugged me back into, so like for for a year and a half, I was like Olympic weightlifting only. And that's when anyone listening that was like in, involved in CrossFit and weightlifting back in 2015, you remember this, like. Olympic weightlifting was huge back then and a lot of CrossFitters were like going that route and you started to see CrossFit like cross over from Olympic weightlifting into CrossFit and like strong Olympic weightlifters could show up at a CrossFit comp and like do really well because of the strength, the technique, the like body awareness and um and so like I started my journey with Lululemon as like as a weightlifter but getting back at getting with Lululemon part of my job was going to CrossFit gyms and networking with people and like finding the influencers in College Station to give product to so that they would wear it and more mm-hmm. people would buy it and of course so I was in CrossFit gyms a lot and I started to miss it like yeah. it was like this like this like love like when I talk about love like I felt this like desire and this love like creeping back up in me and I would say well, over the course of the year the more I was in a CrossFit space, the more that I remembered that, like, mm. this is really where my heart is. Like, yeah. movement, skill, um, all of the things that CrossFit is, right? Mm-hmm. And so, fast forward to the CrossFit Open 2016. Part of my role with Lululemon was, like, I we planned an event at every uh, at three different gyms over the course of the Open for Friday Night Lights, uh-huh. which is a big deal in the CrossFit world. Mm-hmm. And... Um, one of those workouts, I don't, oh, I should know this off the top of my head, but it involved snatches and bar muscle ups. And so bar muscle ups are on a rig and it's a very gymnastics movement. And of course, snatches what I was doing. Yeah. And so one of the, one of the guys at the gym was like, you should do this workout. And I was like, oh no, like I haven't done CrossFit in two years almost at that point. And so 
I was like, I don't know about it. He was like, just do it. Like, just do it for fun, whatever. And then I crushed it. Like, I crushed the workout, and I was like, oh, my God, I can do this again. I, was like, okay. I literally called my doctor, my surgeon. So, at that point, I'd been going regularly for, like, checkup visits to make yeah. sure everything was healing okay. And I called him up. It was, like, March of 2016, and I was like, hey, man. It's like really missing this CrossFit thing. Like, what are your thoughts? And he was like, you know what? Come in. He like booked an appointment for like two weeks later. He was like, come in. Let's do one final X-ray. Let's like check on the progress of everything. If, if it looks good, you can start doing handstands again. Oh, it was like my kind gosh. of the, like the funny part of it. So I, I went up to Dallas. We did it, and like at the end of the day, he, he's a real funny guy. Like he kind of like teased me a little bit about it, and he's like, no, I'm just kidding. You're good. And I was like, wait, what? He's like, you're good. He's like, the only way that you're going to mess any of this up is if you hit a dam again, basically. Mm -hmm. And I was like, okay. And I want to think like the next week I started training CrossFit. I like found a coach in College Station, started doing more Metcons, as we call them in the CrossFit world. Some more conditioning, more skills, more, more of everything, more traditional strength stuff. Mm -hmm. And, um... That was 2016, so at the end of that year, Lululemon, we were booming. College Station was, the company was talking about us. They were really happy with that, how everything was going. But um, I was, like, getting to this point of, like, what's next for me with Mm -hmm. Lululemon? Mm -hmm. And there was an opportunity in the Woodlands, which is really only about an hour and 15-minute drive south towards Houston in Texas. And, um, um, and it worked out. So the, the the company wound up. I moved from College Station to the Woodlands to take over the Lululemon store there. And I actually started as an assistant manager within like within three months. That store manager got moved to the Highland Village store in downtown Houston. And I got promoted to the store manager. Oh my gosh. And that's where I spent the next five years working as a store manager. And then how I got introduced to CrossFit Overtake, which mm-hmm. is where I now go and who I represented and also how we met. Yes, so, yes. That was the start of this journey, and, um, you know, moving was great because I showed up at this this gym. I went. I started January of 2017 at Overtake, mm-hmm. and who at the, it was then, at the time, owned by Marco Coppola and his wife, Erin. And Marco's and also been in the games. Marco's yeah. been in the games a couple times, mm-hmm. and they had just recently came off the previous year, 2016, they competed. That was the last year of the six-person team. Okay. And so, you know, rebuilding was on his mind. And I come in all, like, hot (laughs) and heavy. I'm pretty good. And I think the first words out of his mouth were like, yeah, you suck. Yeah, right. (laughs) I was like, I know you know him, but if anyone listening has ever met him, like, he's so great. And, like, that's that's what I needed. Mm -hmm. You know, like, I had some, like, hyped people in my life that were telling me I was good and, like, I was decent, right? But to get into an environment where I was both being told, like, you suck and I'm here to help you um, was, like, really, I would say, what's it, like, the needle mover or the, Mm -hmm. you know what I'm talking about. Yeah, absolutely. And so um, I would say that's where, like, Team Density for me started. So CrossFit Overtake Team Density is a team name that they could have competed under since for years. Yeah. Um, and that's where, like, the, the, the fun began, I guess. And um, so I'm the store manager of Lululemon. I'm, I'm now I'm training at CrossFit Overtake. Really, but even then, like, I wanted to be on the team. But based on, like, what Marco was telling me, I was like, no. Nah, I've got I've got to get so much better before he even considers me right. to be, like, worthy. And what I was doing in my life outside of the gym was not conducive or in line with the goals that I had inside the gym. So I was drinking pretty heavily and mm-hmm. had been for, for years, like consistently. It had just, I've called already always been a really big part of my like identity, I guess. I don't even know that deep, but, um, May of that year, 2017, Marco and Alex, um, who was my teammate at the games, they both qualified for regionals as individuals mm-hmm. that year. And it was really cool. The whole gym was rallied behind them. I remember watching them, like, training workouts and being like, man, they're doing the pegboard. And I'm like, oh, that's so yeah. cool. Like, I want to do that. And, you know, I'm just, like, doing my thing in class. and But also, like, partying hard on the oh, yeah, weekends. Yeah. And um, so May of that year, we're, te- we're, like, the group of us that trained 
I would say competitors, um, were helping by like testing workouts and like the regionals workouts back mm-hmm. it used to be called. And there was a weekend during all of that, that a friend of mine got married. And so like my college group got together for this wedding on a Friday night, I drank a bottle of tequila. Mm. The next morning, 9 a.m., I'm at the gym doing what I'm supposed to be doing, doing the workouts. I went to work. I had to be at work at, like, noon, I think. Oh, my gosh. Work noon to 8 p.m. or whatever my shift was. And then at 8 p.m., like, met up with some friends on the waterway and, like, resumed drinking. Mm-hmm. And then that night, that was Mother's Day weekend, 2017, and um, everything changed. I, like, had this crazy experience that... Um, I would only describe as like, it felt like an air bubble was like coming through my heart. And I, I, I stood up from the table to like, try and go to the, like to go to the bathroom. Cause uh-huh. I felt so bad. And when I stood up, I blacked out and like fell backwards, uh-huh. cracked my skull open on concrete. Like ambulances came, they oh took gosh. me, I was in the ICU for three days with a traumatic brain injury. I'm supposed to go home the next morning, Sunday morning. So, like, for Mother's Day, like, me and my sister, we're going to take my mom to to, to lunch. We were all going to church together, doing all these, like, Mother's Day things. And instead, they're getting a call from my friend. Now, this is, like, twice in two years that, like, they're, hey, your daughter's in the ER. Right. And um, so my mom shows up. My dad shows up. The next day, Alex comes. Marco comes. Aaron comes. And so they're all in this, like... Um, and like they were in the ICU room with me. And the reason I was in ICU is because of the, the brain injury. Right. Right. So they were like, they had to like, I was, I was fully coherent, but they had to monitor like very closely because there was like swelling and bleeding all this stuff. And so like, I am like laying in this bed, hooked up to all kinds of stuff. My dad's sitting here, my mom's sitting here, Marco, Aaron and Alex walk in. Oh my gosh. One of the first things that came out of Marco's mouth, like not, how are you doing? Not, are you okay? He's like, are you done drinking? And I just remember the way that I felt, like, laying in that bed. Yeah. Like, next to my dad, who was a former alcoholic and sober for years. But, like, I just remember the way that that made me feel. And I was like, it's time to change. So, were they privy to you? I mean, did they know about your drinking? Oh, yeah. Okay. Okay. So, this wasn't, like, a surprise. It wasn't a surprise. Like, he had been telling me, like, for a while. Clean it up. He was like, what are you doing? You're, like, throwing your life away. Like, stop. And I'm like, no, I'm good. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. And um, that was like, yeah, Mother's Day 2017, I would say is like one of the, like the most life-changing days. It is the most life-changing day in my life. Wow. Yeah. And um, I like, I stopped, I, com- I went cold turkey, stopped drinking alcohol. I stopped drinking caffeine too. Just like, I'm an extremist. I want to do something. Take it all the way. Do it all the way. Yeah. And um and it wasn't hard. Like I, like I could still like spend time with friends who were like partying and stuff. And it wasn't a big deal to me at all. Like mm-hmm. I was like, I'm here because I just knew I had made that decision. I made that choice. And I kept the no caffeine thing for about eight months, like yeah. leading up to, um, the holidays. And then I remember we were going <laughs> into a retail holiday at Lululemon. If you know anything about retail, it's like, man, insane. we were, it was insane hours, like tons of fun, but like insane hours. I was like, you know what? I'm good. I can have caffeine again. <laughs> and um, so reinsert caffeine. But it was good. I, like, healed that okay. negative relationship, right? And then, but I maintained sobriety for two and a half years. Wow. And um, because it's what I needed. I needed to heal my relationship with alcohol. And, like, the way that I leveraged it in my life was not, um, it wasn't casual. It wasn't, like, healthy. It was, like, it was toxic. Like, yeah. I relied on that to um, escape. Yeah, that's what it was. And so for two and a half years, I did not drink anything. We trained, we went to regionals together in 2018, mm-hmm. which is so really exciting. cool. Oh my gosh. Um, and that was a four person team. So that was a ton of fun and a really great experience. And, and then I like maintained the sobriety through, I want to say like January of 2019. And, and, and it was just like a thing. I was out to dinner with some friends and um, somebody like we were celebrating something somebody got married or engaged or was having a baby you know all those yeah. things and somebody ordered a bottle of champagne and I was like you know what I'm good and like I remember having a glass of champagne at dinner that night and just being like proud of myself for the work that I'd put in over two years mm-hmm. and like knowing that like I had like changed my relationship and so it's like sure I now I drink every now and then but it's not like it's what not I rely on anymore. for an escape yeah and so 
during all that, so 2019, we're still training, um, but really didn't have any competitive goals. Mm -hmm. And a lot of stuff was changing at the gym. Marco and Aaron sold it to um, Alex and Matt, who Alex is actually their niece, which mm -hmm. is cool. And so Alex and Matt took over the gym. And then 2020 hit, gyms closed down. Yes. We were just training at Marco's house and like doing you know, whatever we wanted to do, like, but not serious. We were not seriously competitive, competing yeah. or even had the idea of that. And then 2021 came around, Alex, Matt, and two other people had put together a team and they were like going into the open and they're like, Oh man, like, I think we actually might have a chance. Uh -huh. So they asked Marco to coach the team Okay. and through like a crazy turn of events, Marco actually competed with them at Granite Games that year. And, um, Coming off of that, so 2021, Marco gets home from that competition, and, uh -huh. like, we're talking about it, and he was like, we've got a chance. Let's wow. do this. Let's put a team together. Uh, let's go to the games. And I'm like, I am not in shape. Like, if you go ask Alex, like, <laughs> the first workout we did, like, she's told me since. She was like, I was not sold. You were not. You were not ready. <laughs> I probably looked then how I look now. Um, <laughs> but... So we started training, and so it was like July, that July 4th weekend um, of 2021 mm -hmm. was our first, like, team workout, and there's, like, 12 of us, like, all of us, like, yeah, my first spot on the team, we all had a workout out for us, and the next week my dad died, oh. and, like, it was, we knew it was coming, like, he had cancer, he fought, he fought a really hard, hard, hard fight for five years, and mm -hmm. the last, like, six weeks before his death, like, just happened really fast. Yeah. And so we were, it was like the super high, we're like, yeah, we're going, we're, we're training for the games. And then like, boom, it's like, now I'm home for four to six. I was like home for probably four weeks, um, with family, just like, yeah, just being there, oh, you know? My God. And, um, and then we, I, and then I made my way back and, um, getting back to like the love story, story piece, like, you know, like I'd fell, fallen in love with CrossFit again. I was so excited. And then like, holy moly, like one of the lower points in my life but then it was like all right how do we climb back out of this and just relying on like the what the team who the team was for me especially the back half of 2021 like yeah. I wouldn't be I'm like I don't know where I would be with it if it wasn't for them and like us having that goal and the structure that they provided and the support and like even the and accountability like there were moments where it was like you're sad, I'm going to give you a hug. But then there was moments like, now's not the time to be sad. Like, suck it up. Suck it up and, yeah. I, and I think we need that in our lives. And mm -hmm. um, and then we made it. We, yeah. We competed and got 12th at the CrossFit That's Games so 2022. Yeah. It, I have to say, like, it was the, well, joining CrossFit Overtake for me and watching you guys train. Like, and I remember JD, before I even joined the, um, the, the gym, was just like, oh, my God, the team's training. Like, have to come <laughs> it was such, like, a special moment. And then when... Uh, you guys made it to the games. I remember watching the games with my daughter, with Gabby. Oh. And she'd be like, oh, my God. Like, she was just so excited. Just the whole team environment and just and being a part of a gym that has professional athletes <laughs> in it is, like, pretty epic. At least on my part. You That's know, like, awesome. I just, it's, it's so cool. Yeah. And so, so you competed in 2022. You're not competing this year. Mm -hmm. So, like, future? Do you think? I don't know. Yeah. I'm going to say probably not. Really? It was, um, my body is wrecked, man. Is like, it? I've got a degenerated disc in my L5S1 that I've just kind of been dealing with. Yeah. Um, for the past several months. And I've, and I've went back to that same doctor who did my neck surgery to uh -huh. like, Hey man, like help me you out here. Do. And he was like, well, we're not doing surgery. So like, get that out of your head, yeah. but here's what you can do. And so, um, really after the games last year, or yeah, what was that? Eight months ago. Uh -huh. Um, cycled through all of the emotions of like, man, for a year and a half, I had a singular focus. I had started. I started a new career about the same time that we like made the decision to commit to the games. And um, with like without that career change, I also don't know if I would have been able to do what we did because a retail environment like it's um, there's not a lot of flexibility in schedule, but. Right. Gratefully, the company I work for now, Podium Nutrition, uh, we work in the CrossFit space, mm -hmm. and so the CEO, the, uh, my, the owner, the the guy that I report to, yes, I, I was clear about these goals going in, and he was like, "Hey, man, I support you. Like, get your work done, do what you got to do, and um, and go do your thing, represent Podium." Oh my <laughs> and gosh. so, 
um, the career change in itself was just an incredible opportunity. And like what I'm doing now, it's like, I can, I love my job. Like mm -hmm. I love what I, I'm doing. I love what I'm building. Um, really gotten to channel some of that in the past few months too. While I've been, I mean, I still say I'm in recovery from the games, um, <laughs> but you know, I took a pretty significant amount of time off just to let my body calm down. And it's only been in the past, um, four shoot, maybe we're at five or six weeks now that I've started training like CrossFit style again. Mm -hmm. And that was because of the in-house open that our gym did. So yes. um, yeah, for the listeners, mm -hmm. we, we divided into how many teams, like three teams and mm -hmm. did an in-house competition. Yeah. And the, the coach of our team texted me. It was like, you're on my team for the open. I was like, I'm not doing the open. He was like, yeah, you are. And I was like, Okay, so I should probably start working out again. <laughs> <laughs> and um, but you know, it was it was it was such such a fun time. And, and now I'm getting to watch the new team density. They recruited two new girls. They're making a run for the games. And at first, it was really hard, like watching those girls sure. and watching the team. Like I didn't really know my place, and um, and it was weird. Like, and I battled with the Do I want that to be me? No, like I'm not ready for that. Um, but now it's really cool to be able to look at them, watch them train, and be like, man, like, I'm excited for them. Good. And, good. Um, and to also to just be detached from from that being part of my identity. And mm -hmm. is there competition in my future? I'm, I'm going to say probably not, but you never know. You never know. But no, you, you never know. You never know. You would have right. asked me in 2019 if I thought we were going to start training for the games. I would have been like, heck no. no it's right. not happening. Yeah. Oh, my gosh. Yeah. So, I mean, but obviously CrossFit is just going to, it's still completely in your life right Absolutely. now. Everything involved. You obviously get to work with some amazing yeah. athletes at Podium. Yeah. Um, Podium is amazing. Oh, your peppermint mocha or whatever <laughs> at Christmas. I see you posting uh, your coffee and peppermint you, bark. Yeah, something, oh, it's so good. Um, well, God, I love your story. Thanks. And I'm so Thanks glad letting we became share friends. It. Me this too. It's so amazing. And. Um, we will have you on the show again, for That's sure. Cool. I know our time is at getting up, but she's got a lot to say, guys. She's, she's definitely <laughs> got a lot to say. I like to talk. <laughs> yeah, and that's fine. That's good. That's what we need. Um, so with that said, you guys, I will see you guys next week. Don't know what it's about yet. Don't know who, if anybody's going to be on it, but I will still be here in Coronado. So XO, you guys, until next time. Bye. 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 Thanks for coming on. Thanks. <laughs>